Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to paint on underglazes to add color and decoration to ceramics. In front of me I have a small wheel thrown pot. This has been bisque fired already, but just so that you know, underglazes can also be painted on to bone dry clay before it's been bisque fired. So you're just gonna need brushes. I like using a big brush for a base coat and then a small brush for adding you know, more details. And then you need a cup of water. These underglazes come in a whole bunch of different colors. I've organized them for my classroom into a warm colored box and a cool colored box, just to make it easier to find the colors you're looking for. With underglazes, the color you see in the jar is basically the color it will be after it's fired. So the colors don't change that dramatically. They will brighten up though and darken in color after being fired. And once you add a clear coat of glaze on top, they'll get much more vibrant and of course shiny too. So I'm starting with a base coat of the color that I want in the background. I'm using a thick brush so that I can get this done faster and I'm applying one heavy coat all over the entire outside of my pot. Eventually you need at least two or three heavy coats of glaze. All right, look right there. I just zoomed in so you can see that little hair. Sometimes the hairs from the bristles do fall off into the glaze or onto the surface of the ceramics. Don't worry about that. It will burn away in the kiln. The kiln's gonna get close to 2000 degrees, so you don't have to worry about those hairs sticking around. All right, so that was one coat you saw me just put on. I'm gonna now switch colors and use a different color in another area of my pot and just let that first coat dry because it's best to put on your second coat after the first coat is already dried. So I'm switching over to purple now. Just gonna rinse that brush in the water, dry it off, and then I can paint on my first coat of purple. And now while that's drying, I wanna show you another tool you can use. This is called a banding wheel. So you can place your ceramics right on top of a banding wheel and then just turn that wheel as you're working so that you don't have to lift up your piece. It's a lot easier. Okay, so I'm going to do my second coat of purple now because my first coat is dried. And again, I'm applying on a pretty large amount. I don't want it to drip, but I don't want to miss any spots either. I really want to make sure I completely cover this entire area with this second layer of the purple underglaze. Once I'm done with this, I'll let it dry and while it's drying, I'll work on the outside again to give the yellow the second coat. Every time I switch colors, I need to be very careful to rinse my brush well because I don't want to contaminate the other glaze colors. I wouldn't want to get any purple into the yellow glaze because that would ruin the color, not only for me, but for everyone else sharing this glaze. Dry your brush as well as you can between washes too. Okay, so I did my second coat of yellow and now I'm adding on some decoration. So on top of that base color, I painted on the designs that I wanted. And when painting on designs, it's best to do two coats as well. And while I realize it might not always seem possible to do that, I just want you to be aware that with only one coat of, of color, what it tends to look like is a little bit more translucent, almost more like watercolor. You see the brush strokes if you don't have at least two coats of the glaze. So once a piece is completely finished being underglazed and you're happy with the colors, you let it dry and then your teacher will be putting your ceramic piece back into the kiln again. After it's fired, then we'll put on two or three coats of clear transparent, which yes, looks pink in the bottle, but it will turn completely crystal clear and be shiny everywhere you put the clear transparent. And at that point, your piece will be completely finished.